Welcome back to Project Oasis Checkpoint 2. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about the video for a ride. And so to generate the ride footage for the projection screens, I'm actually using Unreal Engine. And on my computer here I have the Scene 2 Unreal Engine projects pulled up. And so I got these digital assets from a company called Scans Factory. And I reached out to them and I saw some of their work online. They do a lot of environmental stuff. And I saw this mountainous temple landscape environment and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing, and I, I'd really love to use it for our project. And they generously donated the whole demo environment for us to use. So you can see it's lots of temple artwork, lots of stonework, lots of torches, and kind of a mysterious, dark temple environment. And that's what's actually the, the assets for our ride. And to sequence the whole video, I'm using Unreal Engine's built-in level sequencer which allows me to very easily add in animations, add in sounds, add in stuff in the environment. And then using N-Display, which is an Unreal Engine plugin, I'm able to map the actual footage to the exact structure of our screen to make it that so instead of it looks like you're looking at something that's the wrong scale, you're sitting in the ride vehicle looking into the screen, into a world which is perfectly positioned into your point of view. And obviously along with the visuals, audio is um, arguably more important in the video and to make all the audio I'm using Adobe Audition and so I'm combining a lot of kind of stock environmental audio with the environmental audio rendered by the video showing the actual if you see a waterfall to your right you hear the waterfall sounds to your right if you hear bats overhead you see the bats overhead I mix that with a lot of different audio and environmental sounds and of course our narration so I'll just give you a little preview of that before we begin, allow me to introduce your trusted companion, the Expedition Vehicle. Specifically designed for this treacherous journey, it boasts cutting-edge technology to navigate the unforgiving terrain of the jungle. After Adobe Audition, all of this audio is exported into a software called Windscript Live by Alcorn McBride. Windscript Live allows me to pair each track exported to a specific output. So instead of just mixing down a stereo render of our audio, I'm able to mix down multiple channels. A channel for an overhead left speaker, a channel with just the narration, a channel with just the ride vehicle engine sounds. And that allows me to specifically pair it and match it and blend it with each speaker I want to in the ride path. So if I want to hear a sound overhead in a speaker, which was originally just in the center mix, I can switch that over using the Alcorn McBride Ride Player. Now, this Windscript Live project would mean nothing without our Alcorn McBride Ride Player, so I'll show you that in a minute. In order to power the motion for our ride, I kind of had to design and build my own electronics. And so to make that happen, I programmed multiple Arduinos to bring in sensor data into the ride. So this is an example code for our, actually our rotation sensors. So this takes physical inputs from our proximity sensors, which detect like the rotational motion of the ride, and it converts it to messages which can be sent to the ride control system and to the motor controllers. And similarly, over here I have the track sensors. We just have all of this code basically to find the position of the ride vehicle and report it back to the respective motor controller. So whenever the show system says, drive to position one forwards, it detects the position of the vehicle and uses that to determine when to stop and slow down the motors. So of course, with the ride, I have to show you the almost finished ride vehicle. So what we did to this is we started with a base coat of red oxide primer, and then we painted it with an olive drab green. And so along with this olive drab green, we have some just tan vinyl upholstered seats and seat backs. And so the plan right now is to have a canvas side panels, canvas body panels, kind of like old military vehicles. It'll keep it lightweight, but also have it strong and safe. And so underneath the ride vehicle is what is really interesting to me and to most people. So we have the rotation and drive system. And so it's completely finished and 100% tested right now. This box that you see right here, this is the rotation proximity sensor box. And then we have the rotation motors and then underneath we have the drive motors. This whole system, the drive motors, the rotation motors, and six inches of lift, 20 degrees of tilt left and right and front and back is confined within 15 inches off the ground. So this floor is less than 15 inches off the ground, which is crazy because you can step right in it and 
Nobody's gonna know that it's gonna spin, it's gonna drive, and it's gonna lift up and down and tilt left and right. I think that's pretty impressive. This is one of the control panel screens for the ride. So this one right here is the kind of advanced control system. It allows me to monitor the rotation speed, drive speed, which show starter it's using for the randomized sequence. I can change different effects, turn off the fog, turn off the wind, turn off motion and rotation. But I can also control some of the audio, so I thought I'd show you some of that. What you're hearing right now is some of the cue sequence. So there's some speakers over here that would be in the queue. And I'm able to remotely start and stop the boarding and dispatch spiels. So these, in a typical ride scenario, will be automated. So every minute and a half, the boarding spiel would play. It would play the disembark spiel when it rides over, but I thought you could just hear some of the audio. So this is, this is the boarding spiel. Welcome, fellow adventurers, to the expedition of a lifetime. I am Dr. Amelia Sinclair, your guide through the ancient temple ruins and the secrets of the elusive oasis. Before we set forth, a few important reminders to ensure a safe and unforgettable experience. So what you're hearing right now is the audio from our ride player, which is sitting here in the rack. So what happened whenever I pressed that button is the ride player triggered a sequence which ducked the volume of the cue environment, the cue music, and it played back our voiceover. These are just two of our cue speakers, but there will be, there'll be four speakers in the queue and there'll be around 12 other speakers in the ride itself. To play back all of that audio, to power all the video, to control the control panels and to control the ride vehicle, it takes a lot of computing power. And so what I have here is the main ride control and show control rack. And so I'm gonna just do a quick overview of everything in the rack. On top, we have our power conditioner, which is powering all of our Macs, all of our network, and our ride player. This just makes sure the power is clean. Below that, we have our MK1 manufacturing rack Mac mount. And so from MK1 manufacturing, they built this for us and it has in one use space, two Mac minis, two USB pass-throughs, and these very easily accessible power buttons. That's so basically the ride starts, I press one button, press one button, and we're ready to go. And below that, we have our network switch. This is from Thoughtful Integrations here in Plano. And this switch provides power over ethernet and network to literally everything on the network. Below that, we have our OnLogic industrial edge computer. This powers the control panel and it powers the show control system. So this is running the Vinnie Magic software provided to us by Entertainment Side System. And then below that, we have the Alcorn McBride Ride Player, which I've talked about extensively. It powers all of the audio for the attraction with its onboard amps and its line outs and its extensive network and programming control. Finally, below that is what I haven't had much time to talk about because it's really what we have to make ourselves. But right here, we have a Samlex power supply. This power supply provides 50 amps of 24 volt DC voltage, which powers our motor controllers. Our motor controllers are kind of secretly hidden behind this blank, but that is what I designed and that's kind of our, our proprietary design for this ride, which allows me to take this really high power DC voltage and convert it to variable frequency drive for our two sets of motors on there. And so this Samlex power supply has really been the backbone of the physical part of the ride because it's really hard to find a DC power supply capable of outputting such high power reliably it's really helped having this to power the motors for the attraction. That's pretty much it for Checkpoint 2, and I hope you check back in for Checkpoint 3, where we're going to go even more in depth to the final stages of the ride. 